Welcome everyone. Welcome to our District 103 Club Growth Team's presentation of club sponsor, club mentor, and club coach. I will be the facilitator for tonight, and I am Cassandra Diva of Dialogue Lee, your past district director, distinguished Toastmaster, and as I mentioned, facilitator for this three-segment training. Yes, we are going to learn about three key roles that are so important to the club growth team of every district. Specifically in District 103, we wanted to do something a little bit different, and that was to make certain that we can provide the training for all three roles. That way you get the opportunity to actually see the synergy amongst all of the roles. What I like to say is that club sponsor, is the opportunity for members to serve in a leadership role that is all about the birth of a club. That way we'll focus on what happens when a club is brand new, what does a club sponsor actually does, and then we see how the club sponsor passes the baton over to the club mentor. The club mentor, I like to say, is the leadership role that helps with the life of a club. A club mentor typically stays with a new club for about six months, and they work with that new club to help that new club move from the baby stage and that toddler stage into that confident walking stage. Six months of time they dedicate. A club coach usually comes on board if and when a club that has been in existence, has something that occurs where their membership drops and the club is on the verge of closing. I like to say that a club coach helps with the health of a club. They are working toward making that club healthy again, getting it back to charter strength, helping with membership, recruitment, and retention, making that club more of a vibrant club and a strong club for the members and the district. Each one of these leadership roles do play a major part in the success of every Toastmaster club. And what you may find is with club sponsor, club mentor, that may be the same person, yet the club coach may be someone completely different. With each of these roles, we'll talk again about very specific duties, responsibilities, and some things to watch out for. So that is the breakdown of our program for tonight. Each one of these roles will have their own dedicated amount of time. That way we can go a little bit more in depth. You have the opportunity to ask questions, and we'll do a few activities along the way as well. As we embark upon this training, Let's go ahead and start with an activity that gives us the chance to actually exercise your knowledge. I say, let's share some details about who you are and what brought you here tonight. Here's our icebreaker for this evening or this morning. <laughs> In this activity, what you will find is that I am asking you to share who you are and when you join Toastmasters. Then give me some insight regarding which of the roles that you are here to learn about. Is it club sponsor? Is it club mentor? Or is it the club coach? Or is it all three of the roles? Let me know also why you're interested in that role. And what we'll do is use the chat box for this opportunity. And I'll pause for a few moments in order to give you a few opportunities to have that silence. You'll be able to type your answer inside of the chat box. And as I mentioned, you'll share with me who you are when you join Toastmasters, what role you're here to learn about, and why you're interested in that role in particular. Let's take about 60 seconds to capture those answers. I'll see you back in about a minute.
Thank you all so much for putting your responses inside of the chat box. I appreciate knowing which role you're here for. Thanks, Banu. You say you are here for the club coach. You've been a club sponsor and a club mentor before. And that's a good thing that you've been the sponsor and a mentor before, yet the club coach role is something that'll be new for you to learn about. And I'm sure that you know some of the ins and outs of the club coach role tonight or this morning will simply give you more specifics. Thanks, Elizabeth. Joined in 2006, and you say you are here to learn about all the roles. You're currently serving as a sponsor and a club mentor, and you are in the ro dual role. And I love the fact that a moment ago I mentioned sometimes the club sponsor and the club mentor can be the same person, and you definitely are demonstrating that. So thank you for sharing that. <laughs> Cynthia, I'm loving your response. You say the reason that you are here is because you were asked and you also, you want to be, or you're here because you're learning about being a club sponsor as, and you were also a club coach before and you were a club sponsor before as well as a club coach. And I am looking here, you're interested in mentorship. There we go. My chat box yeah. is moving fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Cassandra. You're yeah. welcome. Yep, gotcha. And thanks for letting us know you've been in Toastmasters for 11 years. Good. Goodness, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks, Mark. I love it. You're interested in all three as well, and you're interested in being able to fill the spot needed for the club growth team. Yeah, I'm with you on that, Mark. And thanks, Elizabeth, for adding in. You've served in all three roles before as well. This is a new opportunity to serve in the roles again. So this is a refresher for many of you. And for other roles, you're learning some of the insight for the first time. Here is something that I have found with all three of the roles. The key aha that I've discovered is that when we do these roles, we do these roles from our leadership style and our communication style, leadership styles and communication styles. Sometimes as leaders, we get reminded that we are operating from our communication style, we are operating from our leadership style, and we have to take into account what the leadership style is of the other clubs or what the communication style is of the other clubs. Tonight, I want to highlight for you the idea of using your communication styles with any of the three roles you're in. Now, why am I talking about communication styles? Well, because for those of us that are actively using pathway, we know somewhere around level two, depending upon the path we're in, level two, one of the assignments, or maybe two different assignments, will be about leadership styles and or communication styles. When we're doing the role of club sponsor, club mentor, and club coach, our communication style will influence that role that we have. Now, in the past, we've been able to take leadership assessments and communication style assessments in order to find out what our actual preferred style is. Since tonight, I want to focus on the communication styles. I want to share with you what those communication styles are. And then I want you to think about what your preferred communication style is and how it might influence those three, those roles, whichever role you take on. This is an actual review of my communication style according to the Pathways Assessment. Direct, analytical, supportive, and initiating are the four communication styles that are reviewed or revealed via the Pathways communication style assignment. When you do that project in your path or your Pathways path, you will take the assessment just like I did. Your scores might be different yet you are going to find those four different styles will also be reflective. 
Now, when I did this assessment and I received my scores, I thought, oh yeah, that's a true representation of me. I typically am a very direct style. I am also naturally analytical. What I was surprised at seeing based on this assessment though, was, was the fact that I don't have any rating at all for initiating that communication style has a score of zero and my style of supportive is low on the scale of two. So for me, this lets me know that if I'm dedicating my time as a club sponsor, a club mentor, or club coach, I will have to make certain that I find a way to enhance the supportive communication style and the initiating communication style. And here's why I say that, especially for initiating. Initiating is the style that is sociable, enthusiastic, energetic, spontaneous, and fun-loving. And due to the gregarious nature of an initiating person, this communication style may be perceived as someone who talks more than they listen. And this style is also perceived as self-assured, innovative, and persuasive. Now, when I say I have to enhance this communication style, I know that I can be enthusiastic, energetic, fun-loving, sociable, uh, that my introverted tendencies sometimes minimizes my ability to be sociable and spontaneous. I, my preference is to be more planned, although I do know how to be spontaneous. Working with a club as a club coach or club sponsor or club mentor, I will need that ability to be more flexible and be more fun-loving and sociable as well as spontaneous. The other idea of an initiating style, such as being enthusiastic and encouraging, I do that and I know how to do that and I'm comfortable with it. Those other characteristics though, associated with initiating, I will have to work to build because I'll need those. The direct style, the analytical style may make me appear to not be as friendly or as sociable when working with a new club or a struggling club. And I need them to feel that connection to me. So I'll definitely want to enhance my initiating style. Now, how about for you? I mentioned for me, and I know me, I am truly a direct style. I'm definitely an analytical style. And I know how to be supportive. I would like to, like I said, before really taking on a role of club sponsor, club mentor, or club coach. And I shouldn't say before taking on those roles, even when taking on those roles, I want to be more mindful of enhancing the supportive style and the initiating communication style in order to find that connection and that balance. How about for you? I love that, Cynthia. You say your style is, your initiating style is the highest for you. So yeah, anyone else that as you take a look at this information with direct and analytical and supportive initiating, do you think any one of these or which one, here's the better question, which of these four communication styles do you think is more of your preferred style? Cynthia has told us hers is initiating. I like that, Elizabeth. Yeah, you believe supportive was your highest score followed by direct. And good, Anthony, thanks for saying supportive. See, this is fantastic. Seeing supportive come in and you knowing that from the pathways level two assignment, you've already done that assignment, or even if you haven't done that assignment, you have a great idea about the fact that your primary communication style is supportive. That's exactly what we need in the leadership roles of being a club sponsor, a club mentor, and a club coach. That supportive style is going to be needed. Now, the beauty of being in a leadership role of club sponsor, club mentor, and club coach 
is that we typically like to partner you with someone else. So for me, knowing that I'm stronger on the direct and analytical side, I would want to be partnered with someone who is strong on the supportive and initiating side. That way we get the all four styles represented and we have that mixture of the four styles that help to support the club. So that's something to consider as we are looking to partner you and you're taking on these roles. Be mindful of your communication style and how your communication style could potentially influence the leadership role that you take on. Mark, I'm looking at your comment and I like what you say here. You need to take this assignment, but you believe your highest will be analytical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you being analytical, like I'm analytical as well, we would definitely partner well with someone who's supportive and initiating. And tonight we actually have a really good representation of all four of the styles listed here. And we could almost partner with each other right now <laughs> with these roles. So that's fantastic. Good. So I appreciate you giving me that feedback regarding your styles. And I know tonight I'll ask you for feedback on this presentation. So a little later, I'll share with you a survey link that you'll be able to provide me your feedback regarding what you learned, how this information benefits you. And of course, I would love to know with your experience, once you get assigned as a club sponsor, club mentor, club coach, how did your communication style really influence the role that you took on? So that I know will be a conversation for later. Let's now move into what I call the birth of a club. This is where we will focus on the role of club sponsor. Club sponsor, I mentioned, is that very first role that we can take on with supporting a club. And that is because a club sponsor is really starting from scratch. This is the role that is helping a club at the very beginning stages. A lot of what I'm going to share with you in this segment comes directly from Toastmasters International. And it is coming from the standpoint of working with a corporate club. Yet there will be a few points that I'll share that will be about a community club. We know that in District 103, a lot of our clubs are corporate clubs. Therefore, think about the information from the standpoint of how you would use it working with a corporate club and even possibly consider the new information, or I should say consider this information about working with a new club with how your club was formed when it was brand new. So let's start with an activity, another activity for the chat box, I should say. And that's with this question here. Why does someone sponsor a new Toastmasters club? And actually, we don't have to rely on it only being in the chat box. You're more than welcome to speak by microphone for this. In your opinion, why does someone sponsor a new Toastmaster Club. Uh, this is Elizabeth. Go for it, Elizabeth. And uh, the reason that a person would sponsor a new Toastmasters Club is to help them build a strong foundation. Uh, oftentimes, a new club is brand new with mostly all new members. Uh, occasionally, a new club has a veteran Toastmaster to join that club, but a person would sponsor a club to make sure that they get off on the right foot, whether they're a community club or a corporate club. Good answer. Thank you for sharing that. Mark, go for it. Um, I was uh, I was in the impression that under under the impression that a sponsor helps a club fill all the necessary papers that they need need to fill in order to become a charter club and that was basically it yeah that's a that's the, yeah that's the highlight of that role absolutely yeah th that's true thanks mark for sharing that cynthia how about you well to me sponsoring a club basically means expanding our 
district and expanding the area expansion and any the reason why you'd want to expand well you know if something's good it either grows or it dies right so this is if we really love toastmasters we want it to expand and sponsoring a club is probably the number one one of the the most important things to do to expand toastmasters correct so to me that's what sponsorship is is birthing giving birth to a new club. Yes, so. <laughs> that's true. I love it. I like what you Thanks. said there. Birthing, giving birth to the new club. Absolutely. I yeah. love each of your answers are so good because it demonstrated a different perspective on what it means to sponsor a Toastmaster club. Here is some insight from Toastmasters International regarding the reasons to sponsor a club. Sure, we want to grow the district. Yes, we want to help the clubs with being able to, or we want to help um, people who join the club to be able to go to the next level. And yes, we will help the club with paperwork, filling out the paperwork. Yet, if we take a step back and think about sponsorship from the standpoint of a corporation that is interested in building the skills of their employees, they are really the catalyst for being able to sponsor a club. We in the leadership role of the district, the reason we would serve as a club sponsor is definitely for all of the reasons that you mentioned. Yet we want to step back before we even become a club sponsor and realize companies and communities are sponsoring a club. And I say that phrase sponsor with quotation marks around it. Unless I would say they are starting or bringing on site a Toastmaster club because of the ability to enhance their employees' knowledge, their skills, and their abilities in the areas of communication and leadership in particular. When we serve as a club sponsor, we do what Elizabeth said, Cynthia said, Mark said, plus these additional thoughts as well. We enhance our leadership skills, we develop project management abilities and we expand our marketing expertise. I loved each of your answers again, because you really started to touch on some of the core topic areas that we'll look at here for club sponsor. We will look at specifically the club sponsor's duties. We'll talk about establishing a corporate club primarily, although there will be some insight on how to launch a community club too. We'll talk about how to feed the enthusiasm of the employees or the new members that are joining these brand new clubs. We'll also talk about completing the charter process and planning that charter presentation. And then I'll mention as a bonus, I'll do a reiteration for you of how to make certain that you get your club sponsor credit. And that will provide you with some additional insight for making sure that if you get appointed, you don't lose the opportunity of receiving that leadership credit. Let's start with the sponsor's duties. Mark, you were right on point when you said, I thought as a club sponsor, we're helping the club to build, to complete the paperwork. And yes, you're right about that. Whenever a new club is being organized, we are helping them with that paperwork. And we'll see in a moment the documentation that's needed. There are about six or seven documents, and we will see very specifically what those are. We're also going to work with the company that is starting the Toastmaster Club with setting up regular club meetings. We want to make sure that they know what's involved and they have a commitment to making sure Toastmaster program is running in their environment so we want to consult with them and advise them on setting up regular club meetings that fit their corporate environment. And of course, we'll deal with the paperwork, making certain they know what to submit. We know what we're assisting them with submitting. And we're also planning the charter presentation, meaning that is the process of saying, yay, you are a brand new Toastmaster club. You are official. You have all 20 members and everything is in order for you to be 
finalized as a Toastmaster club. So that charter process, you'll get some techniques on how to plan that charter presentation. Now I mentioned we do have corporate clubs and community clubs. With corporate clubs and community clubs, those are the main two clubs that are focused on here in this particular presentation. Although you will notice that we are being asked about a few other, uh, or not being asked about, we're being shown there are a few other clubs too, advanced clubs and specialty clubs. Give me from your perspective inside of the chat box, let me know what would you say is an advanced club? What would be an advanced club? What would an advanced club do? And as you put that response inside of the chat box, Cynthia, thank you for letting me know that you have partnered with Claudia Gonzalez as AD and division director in the past. Yes, and you're right. You two complemented each other very well because your communication styles were opposite of one another. Yes. Uh, yeah, go for it. Know. Yeah, Banu, I know. hear you. Take it away. Yeah. yeah, I'm part of an advanced club in South California, uh, which only takes uh, members who have already done the level three or uh, CC uh, of the legacy manual. And uh, it focuses on uh, different skills in, in widening the uh, expertise that you already have. So it's a it's not uh, the conventional pathways uh, as a beginner, but it, it uh, elevates uh, where you have already gotten your expertise and you further polish in the advanced club. I love that, Banu. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, and that's great. I love your answer because it complements what Cynthia put inside of the chat box about professional speakers and what Elizabeth said also about having those uh, prerequisites. Yeah, absolutely. That focus, the prerequisites, those typically give us the opportunity to know that it's an advanced club. You have to focus on or you must have completed a certain thing in order to join an advanced club. A specialty club is also similar to what Cynthia mentioned, where, and even what you were mentioning too, Banu, that specialty club might focus only on a certain target audience, if you will. So it may be a specialty club where the members are all attorneys, or they are all professional speakers, or they're all accountants. That would be another prerequisite yet it would also be a focus group or a target group that would make that a specialty club as well. Now, tonight's presentation is thinking more about the traditional Toastmaster club, traditional clubs that are being created as either a corporate or a community club. Toastmasters International simply wants you to know that there are other club types that are out there and those advanced and specialty clubs would be the other two types. When establishing a corporate club, these are the resources that would be used. For any of you that are appointed as a club sponsor, you would want to make certain that you are knowledgeable with and have some familiarity to, and possibly even having your collection, the new club information kit, which is item number 123 from Toastmasters International, along with the manual, How to Build a Toastmasters Club, item number 121. Now, I want to backtrack for a moment because with that new club information kit, that is usually sent from Toastmasters International directly to the person who's requesting the information to start a new club which means for you as a club sponsor, you may end up finding some of the resources online as a PDF document, and you'll also find references of it inside of the manual. So at a minimum, as a club sponsor, download the PDF version of the How to Build a Toastmaster Club manual. Download that. 
And then that will give you references to some of the other items inside of the new club information kit. And it'll help you to know what that new club, what that company or that community um, entity has access to and what they will be completing. So the forms are in the new club information kit. The forms are referenced inside of the how to build a Toastmasters club manual. And there are also promotional brochures that the new club will get. And you also can have access to those by downloading them from the Toastmasters website. So that I say as a club sponsor, your reference tool will be the manual on how to build a Toastmasters club. Everything else will be those supplemental resources and that manual will refer to those. Speaking of resources, it's one thing to have manuals and forms and brochures and pamphlets and all of that. It's another thing to actually have a team. The great thing about being a club sponsor is the fact, as I said before, we typically like to partner you. That way you have someone who will be working right along with you. We want two sponsors. And because mentors take over right after the sponsor is done with the charter process, the mentors become the team as well. And if we can get the club sponsor and club mentors assigned around the same time, we usually make certain that the mentors are working right along with the sponsors. So that way the mentors know what's going on, what stages they're at. And that way when they take over for their six month term, they at least have some familiarity with the club. Yet the club sponsors, the two club sponsors are working together and they have the backup of the club mentors, the district director, club growth director, and other individuals on the district team as well. Yeah, Mark, go for it. Uh, with the uh, Wicker Park Toastmasters, I was the uh, sponsor and then also the club mentor. Is that not advised? Oh, that's fine. And that makes it even easier. I say being a club mentor and a club sponsor just makes the transition process seamless. With you serving as both, you already knew what they went through as far as the paperwork process, the beginning stages. You were there to see all of that and help with it. That way, when you moved into the six-month term for a club mentor, you were in that transition role and already prepped and ready to go. So yeah, so that was a good thing. That's a good thing that you were both. I know that Elizabeth right now is serving as both as well. So that'll make it easier. You'll be passing the baton from club sponsor to yourself as club mentor, basically. <laughs> yeah, so great question. And thank you for asking that. I'm glad that we are talking about being appointed as club sponsor. I know that in order for you to get the credits, it is important that you have been officially appointed. And what I mean by being officially appointed is the fact that the district director or the club growth director must submit your information to the new clubs team at Toastmasters International in order for you to get credit. We will know that you have been officially assigned because when we go to the dashboard and we look at the reports for the distinguished performance reports and we click on club sponsor, we should see your name show up by the club that you've been appointed to. If for some reason we don't see your name there, then we will reach out to Toastmasters International. I should say the club growth director or the district director will reach out to Toastmasters International to make certain that your name is appearing. You will also notice that this instruction here says the club sponsor name and member number should appear on the prospective club's application to organize. And that's because again, you're assisting with the paperwork. We want the paperwork to actually show that you are the club sponsor that's been appointed. And if your name is not on that application to organize, that's where the district director and the club growth director will come in and make certain that they reach out to Toastmasters International no later than 60 days from the charter date 
to make sure that your name is appearing as club sponsor. Now, with all of that being done, Toastmasters International will provide the club sponsor with a document that you will get signed by one of the charter officers and you will return it to directly to Toastmasters International. Now this form only goes to the club sponsor and it's usually emailed to the club sponsor and they make the attempt to email it to you when it gets close to the time of the club being able to sponsor. And you'll notice that 60 day time frame is usually the time frame that they're looking at. So the final step to ensure you receive credit for your sponsorship is to make sure that you've completed the get credit form and you've turned it back to Toastmasters International. So it comes directly to the club sponsor from Toastmaster International. You'll get it signed. You'll get it completed. And, and like I said, you'll get it signed by a charter officer in order to have it complete. And then you email it back to Toastmasters International to complete that process. So those are, ah, I say, some final steps, if you will, for making sure you get that club sponsor credit. Now let's look at the process a little bit more closely. And this is again where when Mark gave his response about helping the club fill out that paperwork, we, and even when Elizabeth mentioned being able to take the employees, take the members to the next level, this information here about how to establish a corporate club really comes in handy. First of all, we're targeting companies. The club growth team is targeting companies. Toastmasters International gets leads from companies. And the target of a company basically is based on size. So if the company has at least 200 employees, that's a good thing. If they have multiple locations, that's fantastic as well. We definitely want clubs that are within the District 103 boundaries. However, we know that now that things are virtual, we virtual clubs can be boundaryless because they are virtual clubs. Yet physical clubs, we're still looking to have them within the boundaries of District 103, which is basically the downtown area and the south side of Chicago, pretty much. When identifying your companies, we want key contact decision makers. So key contacts, key decision makers, Basically, those are the individuals that are supporting the clubs and they are the champions for the clubs. They will work inside the company to make certain that the club can exist. They also serve as the liaison between the company and Toastmasters International. And when I think about companies that have great liaisons, Cynthia, I think about your company, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield. I think about AT&T even great liaisons right within the boundaries of the company that serve as the liaison with Toastmasters. And those key contacts really help to move things along. Now, something else that you may want to consider, and this is from the research standpoint, when you're thinking about companies, and this is if you were a club sponsor that said, hey, I want to find a company that we can introduce, uh, that we can build a Toastmaster club in, or I want to find a company that we can introduce them to Toastmasters International, and that way their company can grow the skills of their employees. You would really be looking at the key strategies, the key initiatives, the priorities, the focus and mission of the organization. And you might find that you gather some research details about that company from recent news articles, online chats, maybe even LinkedIn too. So that company list is really about the research information. Now, this next recommendation about establishing a corporate club is reminding you about introducing yourself. And yeah, that's true. You're introducing yourself. And this is going from the standpoint of if you have gone out and sought the company yourself, as well as when you've been appointed as the club sponsor. Reach out, introduce yourself, 
And the image is simply saying you can make it formal. You can do an introduction via letter. You can use the Toastmasters International letterhead. And the letterhead we know is online with Toastmasters International. And you can download the template and make it formal. Introduce yourself, let them know who you are. And that way you build that connection. You are in essence establishing rapport and you're doing the introduction. In the letter, in the letter, whether it's via email, whether it's via uh, an actual snail mail document, you want to make sure you introduce yourself, yet set an appointment. Make sure they know what day and time and how they'll meet with you and learn more from you about Toastmasters International. Do be prepared for the meeting. And preparation comes in two forms. Know your details about Toastmasters International and also know details about the company as well. So the reason why the company would be benefit from having a Toastmaster club will require that you know some details about the company and how Toastmasters could benefit them. Therefore, do your preparation. Prepare by knowing about Toastmasters. Prepare by knowing about the company. Also, in your preparation, Know what other corporations are involved in Toastmasters. Toastmasters website gives you some of the key companies that are a part of the organization. We also know within District 103, we have certain organizations which you could use as examples as well. The last thing that you want to do after the introduction is to wrap it up. When you're wrapping it up, basically you're summarizing what was discussed, and you're also highlighting any next steps that you and or the company have agreed to do. Speaking of agreeing, let's talk about discussing finances. Sometimes discussing the finances is a tricky conversation, or I should say it's an uncomfortable conversation for some of our members. And here's the thing we have to remember. Toastmasters is a really good investment that companies can make for their employees. It's an economical investment that doesn't cost thousands of dollars, and it is a financial a commitment that the company will make. What you will be doing in discussing the finances is making sure you can finalize the financial commitment. Is it coming only from the company or will the employees pay for their membership and be reimbursed by the company? Or will the finances be covered solely by the employee? Basically, you'll be determining what portion of the club costs the company will pay if they will pay any. And every company is different. And some companies will follow a process that works well for them. If you know the structure that other companies have used here within District 103, you could potentially share those as examples as well and be prepared for your contact at the company to possibly ask you, well, how have others done it before? I, we're not really sure what we can do. How have others done it? Give an example of your company's process and give an example of another company if you know of it. So that's part of the research, that's part of the preparation that you'll do. And while we're talking about money, understand that money does matter. You're designating a club officer to hold the payments. And this is meaning an employee of the company's club. So when the company is starting the Toastmaster Club, you're making sure that you can recognize who will be the treasurer, and how will the payments be held, hold the payments basically until they are ready to be sent to Toastmasters International. And depending upon the setup that the corporate club will have, you may have to deposit or not you personally, but you may have to advise the club treasurer on where to deposit the payments in order to make certain that the money is being held until they can submit that check or that debit card or that payment basically to Toastmasters International. Yet money does matter. And as a club sponsor, you'll have those money conversations with your clubs 
that you're helping to form. So let me pause for a moment and ask with everything that we have covered so far, any questions that you have about the money matters, the paperwork process, any of that so far? If you're all good, you can put all good in the chat box. Yeah, if you do have a question, feel free to use the raise hand feature. Hey, Elizabeth, I see your mic is unmuted. Go for it. Okay, thank you. I wanted to know, and you might be mentioning this uh, further down, uh, are you going to talk about the payments, uh, how they're structured, meaning um, the, the club, no matter where they, when they are um, being uh, sponsored or getting started, uh, chartered, um, they are submitting six months of dues, and then they have an option to uh, shore up their payments so that they will be paying during a renewal cycle. Are you going to talk at all about that? Or is that too, yes, too much detail? Yes. Uh, no, no, <laughs> we do. We do touch on that. So that's a great point. Okay. Thank you for asking that. And just in case we don't get it in, we will, you definitely remind me. Okay. Good. Great. Thank you for that. No problem, Cynthia. Thank you for your comment. <laughs> awesome. Now, many of you have been around for quite a moment, for quite a while. And I know some of you have been club sponsors and club mentors before, which means you are familiar with demonstration meetings, right? Have you participated in it? And you can simply give me a yes inside of the chat box. I think I'm talking to a group of seasoned leaders where you are already familiar with the actual demonstration meeting. You may have been a part of one before. Yes, and that's what I thought. Yep, you've even conducted them, which means you know that at a demonstration meeting, it is a taste of an actual Toastmaster meeting. We do a demonstration meeting with the same roles we would use for a Toastmaster Club meeting, which means we have a Toastmaster, a timer, a counter, a grammarian, general evaluator, a speaker, an evaluator, and a topic master. Now, typically, the demonstration team, or I should say the club extension team, will put together a demonstration team and make certain that when a demonstration meeting is being done, we can have seasoned members be a part of the team to fulfill these roles. And that gives us a better demonstration for the corporation. However, at a demonstration meeting, some things that we have to keep in mind is the fact that we're on company time. We're going in to do the demonstration meeting in order to provide them with an overview and a taste of what a Toastmaster meeting is about. So we do want to keep the meeting within time limits. We want to include the three aspects of a meeting so they should see the prepared speech, the extemporaneous segment of table topics, as well as the report segment, including a speech evaluation along with the general evaluation team. The team is selected by either the club growth director, the club extension chair, or whoever may be the leader of that demonstration team. The individuals who are a part of the team will be assigned most times the roles that they'll play for the demonstration team. And we may even have some of the employees of that company participate as well. It simply depends upon how the format flows. Yet an idea for a demonstration meeting is to not only include those who may be joining, yet we should also include high level representatives of the company those champions, those VPs, those executives who would really benefit from seeing how Toastmasters works and how it can benefit their employees, as well as those executives that help help the club to grow, they would be good people to have at the meeting as well. So you're inviting high-level representatives, or at least you're talking to your contact, your company liaison, to have them invite those high level representatives. Because the belief is the more the employees can see their executives supporting Toastmasters, the more they will feel committed 
to becoming a part of Toastmasters. And make certain at a demonstration meeting that you have each guest sign the guest book, the sign-in sheet, meaning you want to be able to collect the names of those who attended so that way you have a way to follow up with those who may be interested in joining. Here are a few things to consider before the demonstration meeting. Appoint prospective members, ask for your volunteers, and keep in mind that volunteers need not speak if necessary. Uh, it depends upon the structure of the demonstration meeting. We know that if we're bringing in seasoned Toastmasters, they are going to do a lot of the talking. However, if you need to have the company employees participate in the demonstration meeting, they may not necessarily deliver speeches or be the eye counter and that sort of thing. They may just simply be in the role and you talk it through for them what they would do. But most times we want them to literally see what the role it does. And that's why we'll bring together a team of leaders who can actually demonstrate that. During the demonstration meeting, prospective members will be called upon the Toastmaster acts as a narrator and the Toastmaster describes the role. That is going to happen whether there is an actual demonstration team or if the employees of the company are participating in the meeting. So before the demonstration meeting, there are a few things to do. During the demonstration meeting, there are a few things to do. And then of course, after the demonstration meeting, there are some things to do as well. And that is where you are making sure club sponsor, club mentors get introduced. Now, if they are the same person, that's wonderful. The a company finds out, hey, I'm assisting you with paperwork. Plus, I will be with you for six months after you've become a club to help make certain that you can get your feet wet and you can move through the process. Answer any questions for them. Make sure you share any success stories. Work through the details of the paperwork. Most paperwork may be done, but there may be a few places where they still have to complete some things. And then you make sure that you submit the application to organize and have that charter fee. And Elizabeth, I love when you were asking that question about the cost, because we know for sure they're paying that $125 for the charter fee. Then they're also paying for whatever that month is, that, that six months time, if you will, um, based off of, and not based off of when they join, but they are paying for six months of dues too. And, and, and I'm kind of stumbling over this, Elizabeth, because I'm thinking the prorated, right? It's prorated. Their so membership I, is prorated. Yeah, go for it. I was reading uh, because I was reading the fine print because we had a question about this club and how much they had uh, actually paid. And I was looking at their, their paperwork and under on the charter payments form number two, it says pursuant to the bylaws of Toastmasters International, although you are submitting six months of dues at the time of charter, Toastmasters clubs are required to remit membership payments semi-annually. So it describes uh, April and October are when you are to to submit your semi-annual dues. Clubs chartering in September or March may wish to submit their renewal dues now to avoid having to collect dues from each member twice in two months. So uh, it explains to the club how they can uh, pay a little bit more at the onset so that they don't have to pay uh, twice and have people saying, well, you know, why am I paying again? If your club charters in the month of October through March, your next dues renewal is April 1st. If your club charters in the months of April through September, your next dues renewal is uh, due October 1st. Based on the month your club charters, the amount of dues renewal varies. And then it says, please see the charter membership application for the correct amount. Oh, I am so glad to know the paperwork said that. My advice is going to be as club sponsor, make them aware of the fact that they may want to pay April and October dues depending upon what that cycle is for them. 
Um, that way they don't get blindsided by having to pay the dues. Like right now we're in the collection of dues. Yep. <laughs> so yep. you, you, we, we want them not to feel as if we're coming back and hounding them for more money. The more upfront you can be with them in explaining the process and making it clear on the dollars and cents they have to spend, the better. And yeah. I love the fact that you you were reading verbatim from that form. That is something that you can definitely highlight for them. And it also helps them with understanding when they have to get that paperwork in. And sometimes what happens though, they get their paperwork in and then they're right there at that due cycle. And it's like, well, you pay for the first six months, but we're we're in the due cycle, the, a new due cycle, and it's time yep. to renew dues. Yes. So yeah. So that, convers good. that conversation ha needs to happen so that the yeah. club, yeah. Uh, especially a corporate club who is not paying the dues themselves, so that the, the accountant can have, the HR department can have the right amount authorized off of their corporate card. Yes. Absolutely. That is so true. Absolutely. And thank you again for asking that question. And here's something else I will also mention regarding fees. The $125 that is being submitted with the application to organize, sometimes the company is covering only that and the employees have to cover everything else. Mm -hmm. And then every so often, the company isn't covering anything. So that means that $125 should be divided by 20. And I'm using 20 because that's the initial number of members. But if they end up having more than 20 people join, then you would divide that $125 by however many people it is. So that means that 125 is being covered by every person that's joining the club. And we usually see that more for the community clubs right. where the 125 is split amongst all the members, but there are some occasions where corporate clubs do that too. Thanks for explaining. Oh yeah, you're so welcome. And thank you for asking that question about the money and for sharing the verbatim language about the club dues and the renewals and the payments, because that would be something to definitely highlight and share with the club um, champion or the, I, I don't want to say the club sponsor because that's on our end, yet at the corporate level, who their liaison is, the company liaison. Hi, hey, Mr. Club Growth Director. I think I see you are in the room. You are unmuted. I am. Um, I just wanted to say that, um, thanks a lot, Elizabeth. Um, just got Trisley and Tree on me and just talked about that for. MXD, they, we understood it, but uh, yeah, I don't think they did as much. If you could please put that, what you just got finished reading, if you can kind of uh, take a sample of that and put it in the chat or send it, I think that we all need to have that because that's what we need to recite as sponsors right. when we get bring these clubs in. So please send that to us. We need that piece. And I think what happens with clubs, and this isn't the first time that I've heard clubs that are new having some reservation or even frustration about the fee. I think what happens is they lose sight of that because it takes so long to get chartered. Or sometimes it's there are so many details that they're learning in order to start as a brand new club that they still lose sight of what it takes for that money um, payment. So as a club sponsor, that's one of the talking points that I think we have to keep at the forefront of our script and our checklist that we use when we walk through things with them. And especially if it's taking longer to get chartered, they now have to understand, it, it, as one corporation said to me a few years ago, so now we have double the payment. We have double the payment. <laughs> Well, we'll just try and get it in. Either way, it's you, you're you're at the cusp there. So yeah, you 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 will have that double payment at this point, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. It is simply you are not yet ready, but you are close to getting those um, charter members. 
Yes, Mr. Club Growth Director, go ahead and take the floor. So I was, um, this is actually a question. So uh, as sponsors, do we suggest that they hold until those periods uh, so they don't do, do you know, two, two, kind, uh, two payments back to back and let them go ahead and have their meetings, let them do the things they need to do, but just say, hey, just hold this until, is, is that a strategy or not? I think it is, but I think it is one to be used when it makes sense. I would not have that as the recommendation for every one of the clubs that are sponsoring. I would make that as an option when it makes sense for that particular club. Meaning there will be some clubs that are going to have a lot of anxiety and frustration and possibly a bad taste in their mouth about the process. And you may find that to let them know, hey, look, here's our workaround. Here's how we make this work for you. We're still gonna continue to do the meetings. Let's though be prepared to submit for this date. And that can get some clubs, some new clubs over that frustration and into the pipeline of being an official club. And then there are other clubs where they're going to say, okay, thank you for letting me know. We will prepare for it. We have it in the budget and we'll move forward because we're not yet ready. We don't have our 20 people. And that's basically usually what means that they're not ready. So but again, you, I would not recommend that for every club. I would use that as a workaround for the few where it makes sense. Because some clubs may even forget to pay the renewals if we don't remind them constantly. So that's a true point. So that's we might as well get point. the money up front. Okay. Yeah. And so see. as a club sponsor, I think you have your, your pulse, your thumb on the pulse of things. You kind of have a feel for what will be the best method for that particular club. So if you know they appear that they won't remember, you want them to have the renewals in, um, in place. If you recognize that they're frustrated by seeming as if they need to pay double amounts, then you have that work around and let them wait until the next dues period, if you will. But we, the sooner we can get them in as a club, we always want to have but we also don't want them to come on board and lose them as quickly as well. So it's that fine line that you tend to walk. Yeah. Hey, Mark, go ahead, take it away. Uh, quick question. Um, a, a new club is able to use the uh, pathways only once they're chartered, right? Yes, their members cannot access it until they have paid the membership dues, which so means, would, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So that, that, that means that there would be another incentive for them to join earlier, but there's also that discussion you just had with Dushan about joining a little bit later. Yes, absolutely. All of those are different factors to take into account. You're right, paying earlier, now you all get access to pathways. Not paying the renewal dues, you lose access to pathways. So, right, we, yeah. again, I'm thinking it depends on what who the club is <laughs> and dep depends upon what's happening with the nature of that club. But you're absolutely right, Mark. Pathways is an important part. Pathways is the education program and we need them to have access to it. But I think they can still do their icebreaker and stuff. They could, they'll, they'll see that all that kind of stuff. They can do that um, with without that. So there is access to pathways for the for the first speech. Yeah. Yet if it's taking them eighteen months, their oh, members yeah. have all gone beyond the eighteen yeah. for that first speech. So right. So then it would be up to the club sponsor. Uh, and that's not as easy as it used to be with the CC manual. <laughs> uh, but at least level one is consistent. The new version of level one is consistent. Yeah, it literally would be that club sponsor um, helping to walk them through the first. I, I'm thinking out loud as I'm yep. hesitating here. I'm thinking, how would I do it if I was the club sponsor? And they are taking longer than the six months, eight months, 10 months to get chartered. But I want them to still move through the process. 
-hmm. we would probably be doing some uh, pathways education workshops. And that way they Mm -hmm. get this chance. I would be logging into my level one and having them go through the process. And then everybody would have to deliver the same speech. We would go through that rotation. You know, everybody's doing the icebreaker. So you're breaking it down every meeting, you know, however many people we need to, but everybody's going through the icebreaker. And then once all those members go through the icebreaker, I will give them the ability to learn what the next pathways assignment is. And we do it as an education. So that way I can share the screen and they can see the content and, you know, even have some people read some stuff out loud and work them through that way. And then this is the next assignment that everybody is working on you will be preparing your speech for uh, introduction to body language or vocal variety, whatever that is, and everyone goes through it. So that could get us through that length of time that it may take for a new club to sponsor with their dues if the uh, sponsor did it that way. Oh, thanks, Elizabeth. I see the content that you put inside of the chat box. This is the language from the charter payment form number two. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good good insight. And again, I'm glad that it's there, but like I said, these new clubs they're losing they're losing all of the details that they're being told. It's mm-hmm. not like they were not told. They simply didn't retain it and didn't remember it. Can I mention something at this point? I don't want to get off yeah, of your, go ahead. Go off ahead. of your script, but I had a conversation about corporate clubs and establishing and sponsoring and supporting corporate clubs. And the information came from Pat Johnson's Building and Sustaining Vibrant Corporate Club her workbook. She was in Chicago in 2018 and presented this um, seminar. And the key point that I want to uh, express to all of us in the sponsorship role and and the other roles too, but if you're supporting a corporate club, they speak a different language. And the things that we say and know, the nomenclature that we're comfortable with, uh, DTM, clubs, Uh, pathways. These are foreign to a corporate club who has started their club through their HR department, through their leadership and development department, um, who is looking to have a club on site that's going to help with personal development and training during work hours. So they are not moved by us saying you need to get on pathways, but they will be moved by us saying this is the education curriculum that you've signed on to. They want to hear things like uh, program versus club. So the Toastmaster program versus the Toastmaster club, Uh, the Toastmaster participant versus a Toastmaster member, your tuition for the education and training program versus dues, your sessions versus a Toastmaster meeting, the leadership roles versus club officers. So I have experienced this firsthand with this MXD club because they they seemed to they've they've been very distant and they've seemed to not understand fully everything they signed up for and they are strictly corporate so we've got to talk to them about corporate leadership executive corporate program we've got to talk about the return on investment that they signed up for Uh, they won't be part of a membership drive because their members are coming from the internal club. Their members are coming from a manager recommending that they put Toastmasters on their leadership and development program. You see, so it's all, we have to change our mindset when we're in these corporate clubs and it's key and critical that we find out who that person was that wanted this club in the organization. 
Mm, I love that. Thank you so much for reminding us about that resource. Pat Johnson's book definitely reminds us there is a different way to work with corporate clubs. And you're absolutely right, Elizabeth, about the lingo, knowing the lingo. And I love the fact that you also said you're witnessing firsthand how distant this corporate club is. You also talked about finding the individual that originally wanted the club there, that champion, as she refers exactly, to. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and if you can get that individual back involved or somehow allow them to help support your efforts as a club sponsor, that would definitely be beneficial. And with you recognizing, let me change my lingo, let me change the information that I'm sharing with them, and let me translate it into corporate speak as yep. opposed to Toastmasters speak. Yes, yes. And I, and that may be happening to some other clubs who are being other corporate clubs because they are a totally different animal from our community clubs. And if we try to match them to a community club, we, we may lose them. So I am so mm. grateful for learning about this book because I was like, why aren't they answering? Why are they not responding? Why, are they, why do they have this instead of that? And it has to do with the whole mindset of how this club was put on the map. So mm. um, just being able to burp, reset and redirect is uh, going to help this club thrive. They they need a lot of assistance. They have one Toastmaster who's been in the program for a while and is coming back. So that may be the champion. What I have to do is find out who that champion is or was because there's some really, there's some structural things that have to get put into place uh, immediately. Okay. Good. So that's all yeah. I want to share. Oh, and that was a lot. I appreciate that because it definitely complements the language from the charter payment form number two. And it ties in nicely with the fact that we're going in for these demonstration meetings. We want to be talking the lingo that's speaking to the company right. as opposed to speaking the language from Toastmasters. It, it, yeah, this uh, I'm blowing up here. I'm like, yes. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh man, we almost need to take her book and translate it into a checklist for our corporate sponsors or for our club sponsors who be working with corporate clubs. We may need to have her book as that resource and whether uh, they get a copy of that or we simply take some of the key points and provide it as an additional supplement to that how to build a Toastmaster Club manual. Yet yeah, I'm thinking there are some key there's key information that we are missing as an opportunity, I think, for this our may, club. I Go know ahead. that I know that we have the TLI already set set and 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 it's already out the door and all the speakers are there and available. But this is a topic that could be very helpful to ADs and other leaders who are having to deal with the corporate club versus the community club because the ADs already know there's a difference. They already mm -hmm. know they just don't have the tools uh, and the resources and the why behind why this club is acting so different because they don't see us as um, uh, they don't see us the way we see them. And so they don't, you know, we have to talk to them as communication and leadership, you know, how the, the, the program is helping them with their critical thinking, with their adult education. We got to talk all, we have to convert everything into the language that they understand that they put on their annual reviews every year. What is the name of Pat Johnson's, Pat Johnson's book? Building uh -huh. and Sustaining Vibrant Corporate Clubs. And yes, I think Deshaun, you have some copies of. Yes, I have some copies. I will give you a copy. Okay, okay good. Good. Thanks, Deshaun. And it almost sounds like, too, this could be some training at a DEC meeting. Mm. Yeah, because as you said, I'm thinking who would need to know this more immediately? Definitely club sponsors. So club sponsors could be possibly invited to that DEC meeting, yet the ADs and the division directors, Deshaun. Yes. This may be beneficial um, because for the TLIs, that would be more general leadership and not all yeah, 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 you're right. And not that, and not, yes, the general leaders that are at the 
starting at the club level, but the, the, the leaders that are out there on the battlefield that have to deal with these clubs, the ADs and, um, and higher would definitely benefit to know, oh my gosh, this is why they aren't hearing me. <laughs> yes, very true point. Good point. I, yeah, <laughs> and we talk about this is a communication club, right? And part, and that's part of the communication style. Absolutely. Knowing the communication style, we have to change the language, mm -hmm. not necessarily the style, but in this case, we have to change the language to speak the language of the corporate clubs. And that, you know that is why the all of the the. Um titles changed for the leadership because that is so true. we have to speak the length. So they need to be speaking to a director. They need to be speaking to a manager uh, in Toastmasters. And then, then we go out to the corporate and we are apples to apples instead of apples to oranges. Yes. Yes. Very true. Good point. Very good point. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I loved it. Thank you. That was that, yeah, that was a nice bow for the corporate club conversation because with this training here, Toastmasters International now launches us or teaches us how to launch a community club. And like I said, some of the steps are still the same as we would do for a corporate club, such as the team. So we'll still have two sponsors, two mentors. The district director and club growth director will assist, as well as any other Toastmaster or district leaders that are needed. The chartering process is pretty much the same as, well, slightly different because a community club, you're going to find you really do need that publicity. With a corporate club and a community club, you are going to plan a demonstration meeting. And we saw in depth how to do the planning of a demonstration meeting for a corporate club. The same ideas would follow for doing a demonstration for a community club. Yet a community club needs that word to get out. And that's why you'll see for the steps to chartering a community club, you want to publicize the meeting, contact the local chamber of commerce, display posters and announcements, target specialized groups, and of course, we know we can also throw in social media, which could be connected to targeting specialized groups and displaying posters. Yet community clubs, the emphasis on chartering them ties into the publicity for that club. Whereas with a corporate club, not so much with publicity, because again, their employees are coming from in-house most times. And most of our corporate clubs are closed clubs because they are only for the employees of that company. So these are some of the steps there. Now, as I look here at this question, and this question is asking us, how do you keep the prospective members' interest and enthusiasm? How do you keep their interest up? How do you keep them enthusiastic? And I think that this isn't only for a community club. This could be a question for corporate clubs as well. Yet in general, what are your thoughts on how do we keep them enthusiastic? How do we keep them um, interested in the Toastmaster program? And you're more than welcome to speak by microphone or you can put it inside of the chat box. In, uh, in my experience, um, you keep prospective members enthused by involving them uh, in one, one, one role or another and make sure you're alternating. In other words, playing the VP with the prospective members. And also introducing uh, workshops. I like that, Mark. And I like how you said you, you keep them involved and that involvement feeds their interest and feeds their enthusiasm. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Good point, Elizabeth. Remind them why they joined in the first place. Yeah, that reminding of why they joined definitely fits in keeping them connected to their uh, keeping them connected to the interests, it feeds into their enthusiasm as well. 
So these are some good points here. And we know that with a club that is chartering, depending upon how long it takes, interest and enthusiasm can definitely begin to wane. So I love the suggestions that you're giving about how we can keep them interested and the way that we want them to be interested is staying connected to their why and keeping them involved. Here's some other ideas about feeding their enthusiasm. And keep them informed about those meetings, select temporary officers, and we'll have to do that anyway because of the paperwork, follow up with any reminder notices, collect dues, and conclude with recognition. So this is for launching a community club Yet I think some of these ideas can also be used for the corporate club as well. Speaking of filling out the paperwork and identifying who the temporary officers are, let's look at the information regarding the paperwork. So these are the seven documents that are part of that new information, that new club information kit. So the new club information kit, which I think was item number 123 with Toastmaster or 121, item number 121 is right there. And I know Elizabeth gave us the language from charter paperwork form number two a moment ago. So number two would be a part of this collection. Seven documents club sponsors these seven documents, you will be working with the club champion or the co corporate liaison, the corporate champion to make sure these forms are being filled out, being filled out correctly, and also being submitted to Toastmasters International. After the paperwork, after all that paperwork is submitted, after the paperwork is submitted correctly, after the paperwork is submitted along with the appropriate payment, you want to make certain that you are planning the presentation. And that is another way of saying planning the charter party. So you're inviting guests. It depends upon if this party is virtual or in person. You want to plan the meals and publicize it, form committees, get the programs printed. And you do want to do a short meeting because of the fact there may be guests guests who are not members of the Toastmaster Club, and a short meeting will at least give a taste of the, of the Toastmaster program. And also, I'm thinking, too, charter parties usually for corporations are within their lunch hour, or most times the company's Toastmaster Clubs are within the lunch hour or that one hour time frame. So your charter party will take up a portion of that hour. So with the short meeting, it's short for the purpose of making sure you can do the other elements of a charter presentation, plus handling some of the business of the club in addition to giving everyone a taste of the Toastmaster program while also celebrating the fact that a new Toastmaster program is there. And then as a reminder, that charter process, that charter presentation, it leads into the club sponsor getting credit. So you do wanna make sure that you apply for your credit no later than 90 days after the club's official charter date. So you get that form completed by a club officer. You make certain that you submit that form to the Toastmasters International team. So that way you can get your credit. So in conclusion, and I know we spent quite a bit of time on our club sponsor, and that's an important role because this is the role that's starting the club. It's the birth of the club. So there's quite a few things that are happening because that club is being organized. You're making sure that you're setting up those regular club meetings and completing the paperwork. You're planning the charter presentation, and you're getting the members excited to use the Pathways Education Program or the learning modules, whatever lingo you have to use that fits with that corporate club to make sure that they are involved and participated 
in the program. So in closing, that is how you would build, or I should say, the resource of how to build a Toastmaster Club, which is a step-by-step guide, is again an essential resource for club sponsors. So let me know, what thoughts, what comments, what questions do you have for club sponsor? I'm looking in the chat box to see if I missed anything. And it looks like we are all good. And if you're all good, you can give me a reaction icon of a thumbs up. So that was the club sponsor. Yeah, Mark, go for it. Uh, Will we be uh, matched with... An, uh, a partner that has comp- that has a communication style that complements ours, or will it be our job to try to find the fit? You know, that is a great question. Since we talked about that tonight, what I'll do is work with Dushan to make certain that I mention that when he's making those uh, making those partnerships, because you're right, it is very important if we know, like you and I know, we're analytical. We need someone who's going to bring in that enthusiasm and we need we need to be partnered with someone like Elizabeth. Yeah, to know something. Be, because she, <laughs> you know, she, she's the, <laughs> not only does she know something. Hey, I'm telling the truth though. <laughs> yeah, not only does she know something, but she has the supportive style. Her Her communication style is supportive. And that blends well, that'll help to complement. So yeah, Mark, that's a great point about club sponsors. What's the style? Now, what we may have to do also, and I'm saying this out loud, Mark, as I'm thinking about how to do this. Tonight, we were a group of informed leaders. We know what our communication style is because we've either done the assignment in level two of Pathways. So I'm wondering if, we would want to make sure that the club sponsors have done that and we can find out their style from the pathways assessment. So that, and again, I'm saying that in a questioning way because I'm talking out loud, thinking out loud at the same time that I'm making the attempt to figure out how can we make this truly work to the benefit of the partnership of a club sponsor. Yet we don't have to figure that out tonight, yet I'm glad you asked the question because you've given me food for thought. And I'm glad our club growth director is here and he's hearing this too. And the two of us will partner to make sure we can look at the partnerships for club sponsor and club mentor to make sure that 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 blend, that complementary style is being partnered together. Yeah. Good. I love it. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Let's look now at the life of a club. The life of a club I mentioned before is the stage of a club where the club mentor comes in play. The club mentor transitions into their role directly after a club sponsor. So that means once that club has 20 members, it is official and it's on its own to operate as a club. Boom, this is when the club mentor takes over because they will walk through the process of that new club and help them through the process. So here in this segment, we're going to take a look at the official duties of a club mentor. We'll talk about having quality club meetings. We'll even learn more about building and maintaining membership, recognition, the education program, the D, the Distinguished Club Program or the DCP, as well as you'll learn insight about getting your credit as a club mentor, how to request your credit for club mentoring. So those are the c- session topics here for this segment, which is again, focusing in on the life of a club. Now that we have a new club and the new club has gone through all that paperwork, how do we keep them? This is the segment that will help us to learn how to keep them. So now here's a question. In your opinion, what is a mentor? What is a mentor? So this is a question for you to give me some food for thought. Feel free to speak it by microphone or you can put it inside of the chat box.
a mentor shows the ways, the Toastmasters ways. Mm -hmm. I like that. Shows the Toastmasters ways. Yes, <laughs> Anthony is a supportive guide. Those are good responses. Absolutely. And I love both of those responses. They complement each other and they tie in nicely with our official definition, which basically club mentors are going to be the advisors and the tutors for a new club. They are the ones that really do help to influence the success of a club. They are going to have a, an effect on that club. So that club being successful, it's really going to rest on the shoulders of a club mentor. The benefits of working with a club mentor, I should say the benefits of serving as a club mentor is the fact that you get to share your expertise. You can translate values and strategies into productive actions. You'll be able to prove yourself as a valuable leader as well as invest in the future of Toastmasters. I think all of the roles of club sponsor, club mentor, and club coach helps to invest in the future of Toastmasters. Yet a club mentor truly does because you're with that club for the first six months, helping to build that club into success. As a club mentor, you will obtain fresh perspectives, build your teamwork skills, apply leadership skills in new situations, as well as earn credit toward your Distinguished Toastmaster or DTM award. Now, when you are serving as a club mentor, even if you are serving as a club sponsor, you will also do the same process, meaning we want to make sure that you get appointed as a club mentor. So that means your name should be submitted to Toastmasters International. Either the district director or club growth director will do that. We want to make sure that your name appears on the application to organize. Even if it doesn't, the club, direct, the club growth director or the district director can make sure that you are appointed by reaching out to Toastmasters International at the new club's team to get you on that list. Both the club sponsor and the club mentor, those roles, the assignments must be done within 60 days of charter. So keep that in mind. And again, you can have up to two sponsors as well as up to two mentors. So if you're serving as both a club sponsor and club mentor, your name will be in both places on that application to organize. A club mentor works with a club sponsor. Now, you may remember when we were talking about club sponsors, we said club sponsors have some help. They have a team. The team helps them. And with the team helping you, the sponsor and the mentor were on the team together. So keep in mind that the club sponsor is your support system. They're helping to charter the club. They're helping to follow up on those leads. They're helping to generate that interest and enthusiasm. They're helping to recruit the members and they're helping to make sure that all of the paperwork gets submitted. Now, if you are serving in both roles, again, you have a seamless transition in doing both of those roles with the paperwork and the new club and all of that. So you will serve in the role of club mentor to make sure you pick up where the club sponsor left off. So you really are being the individual that is helping the club to be able to have the success that they need. Now, speaking of success, I want you to share your responses so a few different questions that I have. I have five different questions that will give you the ability to share your knowledge. And I, I'm thinking of this more or less as a group activity. And what I'm going to do is keep you right here. I'm going to show you all five of the questions. And I want you to put your responses inside of the chat box for me. I'll give you a few moments in order to provide your answers. You can put in the chat box number one and put your answer, then number two and put your answer. You can do it that way. Yet I'm going to pause for a few moments. I'm also going to put the recording on pause in order to make sure you have some time to think as well as to type your responses 
inside of the chat box. Therefore, let me go ahead and pause right now. And I'll also bring up a timer for you. That way you have a few moments of silence. So I will see you back in a few moments. 